Welcome to Kitchen 101, where we teach you how to think like a chef, how to cook, not what to cook. Today, you will learn about the history of gumbo. So grab yourself a pen, paper, and some filet, because I'm Professor Kitchen, and class is in session. There are some foods that seem to have variations in nearly every culture around the world. Then there are other foods that are so tied to a single culture as to be synonymous with that culture. Gumbo falls squarely in the latter category. Gumbo is so much a part of Louisiana culture that it is surprising that they don't have a picture of it on their state seal or flag. Gumbo, in case you never had it, is a stew native to the New Orleans, Louisiana area, seasoned primarily with a deep brown roux, a vegetable mixture called the Trinity, and then served over rice. While today you primarily have three types of gumbo, chicken and sausage, seafood, and okra. Historically, they made it with whatever they happened to have. That would have included alligator, neuter rat, snake, and all kinds of seafood. Unlike most other foods in Western culture, the meat in gumbo is a modifier of the dish, not the defining component. Let's take a look at how this classic Acadian dish came to be. Our story does not start in Louisiana, but much farther north, Canada in fact. The island of Nova Scotia was first populated by Europeans in 1605 when the French founded what would become Acadia. For the next 150 years, the French, British, and Dutch fought over control of the area. That's a lot of argument for an island about the size of Arkansas. Then, during the French Indian War, the English, who controlled the island at the time, decided to remove anyone who wouldn't take an oath of loyalty to the British crown. At that time, most of the population were descendants of the French colonists and the indigenous peoples, whose name I'm not even going to try to pronounce. Who, by this time, had conjoined and intermarried to form a new peoples, the Acadians. These folks told the British to shove it, and so were shoved into boats and shipped down to the Louisiana Territory, which was then fully controlled by the French. They tended to settle in the area around the largest city at that time, which was New Orleans. While relatively near the town, they were still in remote areas. The locals of New Orleans didn't particularly care much for these interlopers and shortened their cultural name from the Acadians to Cajuns as an insult. Eventually, the peoples took that name on in pride as part of their cultural identity. Being picked up and forcibly moved to a new place that didn't particularly welcome them wasn't easy on the Acadians. They learned to do with what they had, pushed out into the swamps, bayous, and prairies that they had never known before, and forced them to live off of what was plentiful. From this stressful beginning came such amazing dishes as jambalaya, etouffee, and fricassees. But the one that really took hold was gumbo. Most likely, this is because gumbo doesn't rely on having a particular meat or a lot of a hard-to-get veggie. Every gumbo has to have these things, a fat of some sort, flour, onion, bell pepper, celery, water, and rice. All of these are, and were, available in abundance in Louisiana. Then you take whatever you have on hand, dump it into the pot, bam, you got gumbo. Yeah. The interesting thing about this dish is that the main flavor component is the fat and flour combination to form the roux. A proper gumbo roux is deep brown and flavorful without being burned. While many cultures use the amazing thickening power of a roux, only the Cajuns have perfected it to use it as a primary flavor component. The roux is, by far, the hardest part of the gumbo. But, if you can make a gravy from scratch, then you can make a roux. If you don't feel up to the challenge, there are some pre-made roux that you can buy at the grocery. These roux are passable, but not as good as homemade. It is, however, a great way to get over the fear of making this classic Cajun dish. Just don't invite any Cajuns over for dinner until you learn to do your own roux. Seriously. One of the best things about the information age is that we have access to recipes of cultures that are different from our own. Don't be afraid to go out and experiment with Cajun cuisine or any other foods that you enjoy. Learning to think like a chef means experimentation. If you want some more information, I have put some links in the description box. If you would like to see more videos like these, there's a link on your left it will take you to another class. Thank you for coming today. I hope you have a great week. God bless. Class dismissed.